1919, he hit 29 home runs and was sold to the New York Yankees. A three-run home run for Buckington. The Yankees now lead it by a score of three to two. Bill Lee is now going over to a couple of the Yankees, and there they go again. Tech and A-Rod going at it. Roberts is going. Passat is throw. Roberts, safe. And what can I say? Just dip my heart and, and call the Yankees my daddy. Welcome to Fan Base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. Brian Shackman, John Senecal, your regular host. We welcome Matt Sorois here, who produces the show a lot, uh, to join us for this special episode. It's a quick quick hit here. We got our wild card edition. Episode uh, 50. Yeah, episode number 50, and, and it's a big one. Just quickly, like Matt went to the... Game number 162. First of all, thank you for the offer on the ticket, Yeah, what the, why didn't you yeah. go? What kind of thing are you? cart my damn kids around so why all have day. your wife do it? His wife is busy, man. What, Tax season, what? carting kids around <laughs> and working. I don't know. I question, <laughs> I question your commitment. Listen, last week, Brian ditched his kids and went to the game. So we right. know where the parent priorities are here. <laughs> right, but I went to the game. So there's that. So uh, you didn't go with Matt. Just quickly go around the horn, your impressions on how the season ended, how you feel, and then we'll get to some specific. Specific. Hey, how was it, I want to hear about the game. I want oh, to hear about on. the game. What, you want the tic-tac-toe? No, no, not the tic-tac-toe. I just want to, like, you, one hit, dude, in nine innings. You must have been sitting there like, all right, is anything Miserable. ever going to happen? Miserable. Though. I mean, Glaber got the hit, I think it was like in the fourth or fifth, and I was like, all right, here we go. Something should Did be he not here. run out something or the something? Game before. The game before, yeah. 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 And, and then, and, and, like, like, ten games before that, and then, like, twenty games say before that. Done, and then, he's, yeah. yeah, he kind of, like... Reminiscent of Robinson Cano a little bit, like, what are you doing, bro? Like, start running out. Seriously. But Just, you, like, regardless, if you're down 12-2, right, in that game, still, like, that's not the look you want to send. No. Ever. Ever, right. Not, not to the team and especially not to the fans. It's funny because I always York. say, like, uh, my, my kids always say, like, like Jeter never did that. Jeter never did that. So most most baseball players don't do that, but there's a lot that do. No, I know. In general, like, I mean, I always say. I hate the loafing. I, well, I always say to my kids who are who do loaf that. You should you should act like even when you think no one's watching that someone's watching like because right. there like, always is somebody watching. We used to recruit watching. for hockey. We I I was always told look what the guy's doing when he doesn't have the puck because that'll dictate what his work ethic is. And anyway, just real quick, was it fun though, or just like stra- oh, it was a blast? Yeah, no, I, I had a great time. You know, I, like I, I sent you guys a picture of traffic leaving, which is just always a mess. But um, other than that, it was a blast. You know, we got there a little bit early. Um, got to see some batting practice, which was nice, and then um. Uh, just the game itself, just being there. I mean, the Yankees pitching really grinded out a win, which was, you, you know, seeing Jameson Tyon go out there and then, you know, Boone pulling the hook on him. I was kind of surprised like, Boone like, pulled him doing? when he did. Like, I know. Again. He's kind of rolling, but, I mean, there must have been a plan in place. Obviously, you know, holding Garrett Cole back from that game, they must have had a plan in place and they kind of stuck well, to it. We'll say smart. that now they had a plan in place, but, like, everybody, including yourself, you just said it. I mean, I'm, I'm listening, listening and watching the game yesterday as I'm driving around. And I'm like, why are you taking him out right now? Yeah, but now? what if he got two guys on with no outs the next inning and you would have said, like, he should have pulled them? I mean, right. like, maybe those give are, him one more batter, are, but he was those, pitching good. He yeah, was. I mean, either way, they, all their calculations have come through well, right? I mean, listen, they got through the game and they have Garrett Cole to play against the Red Sox yep. on Tuesday. Uh, in terms of, you know, for me, like, we don't as a family sit down and watch a ton of baseball, but the, the game starts, the three o'clock starts were awesome. Yes. Having them all yeah. I don't know if that's Big a regular fan of the three thing. o'clock start. Yeah. It was great. And then, you know, the Red Sox were down five to one, and my wife, she's always, I just, in some ways, I get so mad at her for being so optimistic all the time, <laughs> you know, because I'm like five one. Okay, we're going to play Toronto. Like, that was sort of my, my thing. That's oh, we were going happen. nuts. We kept watching it, updating, updating. I'm like, Oh, they're down more. They're down yeah, more. Was, and and what I would say is that I, as an aside, we can talk about this a little after. Is that I kind of was wishing for some chaos. Like I would have loved a four way tie or a three way tie for and something. It was so funny too. Uh, I, I usually sit behind the um, the visitors bullpen in Yankee Stadium, kind of heckle them a little bit. But the, I bought tickets for the Bleacher Creature section this nice. time, and you know, uh, interacting with you know the players out and uh, the the fans chanting, you know, Boston's losing, Boston. Yeah. And seeing Aaron Judge like turn around, look at and give us like a thumbs up, like you know that they want to know like what's going on in the other games while their head's still in this game. Yeah, it was cool to there's, see. There's really nothing better as far as a baseball fan or you know sports fan in general is that that final push at 162 at the end of the season because you watch like they, the, the fans were still sitting in the Rogers Center watching the game yeah. on the jumbotron, and, you know, and, and even even the Mariners were still king, you know, and they were they they were almost pretty much out of it. Right. 
Well, I want to say something about that, but I guess you're going back to watching the game with with my kids and my wife. The Rafi Devers home run was really exciting. I mean, it was really, and he knew it, and he crushed yep. it to, to the deepest part of the park. And I hand it to Washington, even though they got swept. Washington, Tampa, they did not. No, they roll didn't roll over. over. No, they did not roll no. over. And same with the Angels, which I was even more surprised yeah. yep. that they they didn't roll. They didn't over. pitch Shohei the last. But day, I will but... tell you that potentially the most dangerous team in the American League isn't in the playoffs. And I mean Toronto. I think no, I don't think anybody wants to play Toronto. No, and the, I almost feel bad for them. They played almost half the season on the road. Well, they made a statement going out. I mean, they put they, yeah. They what kind of statement? Some runs. Statement kind of sucks if you're not in the postseason. Right. I mean, that team is good enough. I think they could beat the Yankees. I think they could beat the Red Sox. And I think that if their pitching held up, they could give the Rays a series. I mean, they're that explosive. And so I think a lot of AL teams are kind of grateful that that they're not. Well, I'm in glad. It. I'm glad we're not. I mean, right now, I would. I would. I would have rather face Seattle, to be honest with you. I don't want to face the Red Sox, yeah. but I would not want to face the Blue Jays. I mean, the Yankees got 17 hits in the series against the the, the Rays in three games. Yeah, the Rays had 19 hits on Saturday alone. Yeah, that's crazy. You know, well, so you like, heard the nugget that the Yankees had the choice of whether they would like go to Toronto or to Boston. If yeah, they had, and they chose Boston. They would rather go to Boston than Toronto. I would. I don't blame them. I would. Yeah. Toronto is so dangerous. I mean, obviously, we shouldn't be talking about them because they're out, but just the way they hit. I mean, they're just too dangerous the way they can put up runs. Yeah, It's totally. simple as that. So the reality is we have a situation where you have Garrett Cole against Nathan Ivaldi, uh, and the the history, we were talking about this off mic, but you know there isn't a long history between the Yankees and the Red Sox in the playoffs because for decades and decades— Started they, in 99. Yeah, the wild card is the only way they could face each other in the same division and, and outside of Bucky, Bleep, and Dent in 78. 78 they, That's their they, last winner— Go home. Right. So, I mean, as far as a one game, I think, what do you think is going to happen? Just give me a quick take on on the game. I mean, I would say, even if Garrett Cole's groin is still a little jacked up, I think the Yankees have the edge, showing what Valdi did against the Yankees last start. Um, But, I mean, Jesus, dude, it's baseball. Everybody that usually should step up should usually steps up. And I feel like every time, if you're a good pitcher, you always come with your A game in the postseason. I I would agree with John as well. I think the Yankees should win this game. Speaking as a fan, obviously a little bit biasedly, but at the same time, it, you know, they got one hit through nine innings yesterday, Scary. And, and you never know what can happen. Well, it they, was, And it wasn't like the Rays. I mean, yes, the Rays played them hard, but they weren't throwing, like, aces. I mean, the Rays don't have a bunch of like, aces, but, you know, it was the pitching wasn't overpowering, I guess right. is what I'm saying. I, I just, you listen, I think the Yankees embarrassed Boston at Fenway in that series sweep, and I, I here, here's what I'll say. I don't think the Red Sox are a championship team, and I, I don't even know if they're good enough to, to do anything. So, I mean, like, people ask me, like, because I, I can go to the game, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I want to spend 300 bucks To see that. To see a team that I know is not going to win the whole thing. And then other people are like, well, you don't really like baseball. I mean, it's just sort of how I feel. Right. When we do, in the last couple of years, when we do our playoff, you know, postseason draft, I always just pick the World Series games because the, the only game I want to pay for is the World Series. Right, it's and really the only being, game that matters because they're there. Right, and we've been spoiled. We've had four titles in the in the century, so... I'm I'm a little torn, and I think right the game's a sellout, and I think that the the secondary market's really healthy, and I think part of it is I think Yankee fans are driving up. Yeah, I was just going to ask you that, Brian. Do you do you think it's going to be yes, kind of the same showing? I do. Hopefully that they're going to get. I think it's going to be, fan, and I think it's going to make the game more fun. Yep. For, but I think it'll be it's not going to be dangerous per se. But I think that if you have a couple thousand Yankee fans and the way they embarrass the Red Sox, there's going to be a couple doofuses who have oh, a few too many drinks. There always gonna, is. So I mean, it, it's going. But I do I do anticipate. A really healthy, let's go Yankees versus let's go Red Sox chant. Which I'll tell you, the lot the game I went to two Saturdays ago, uh, it, it, it was it almost was, all Yanks. It, it, Listen, it was hard to discern who was winning that battle, and the Yankees might have had a little edge. So, right. uh, in terms of win loss, I don't really know. I have a feel for it because I, I think it doesn't matter. I, I think that Garrett Cole's the kind of guy like uh, he always reminds me of Messina somehow, even though they're not the same pitcher type thing. But like, there is something about the moment that I feel like he'll be pretty pretty amped up. To yeah. Pitch the other well. thing I I was saying this to my kids this weekend about Cole is he's the kind of pitcher that even if he's off, he's going to give you six innings. He's going to keep you in the game. 
even if he's off. He's not. He doesn't. He should not go out there and, and blow shot, it and get it pulled in two thirds of an two inning. thirds inning or two innings. He yeah. he he's the kind of guy if he's going to give up three runs, he's going to or four runs, he's going to throw six or seven innings with eight Ks. But yeah, I mean, for me, and, we're, and listen, John Senecal, Brian Chapman, our episode fifty of Fan Base, the deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. We're just sort of like an emergency edition. Uh, we'll try to tape again later in the week after the wild card game and go from there. We have so many issues to talk about. Your buddy Bobby Dickerson might be out of a job, and there's a whole bunch of other stuff going on in our sphere that we want to talk about. We're focused so much on the on the wild card game, the big and, one, and and what goes on from there. But it, it it's fascinating that it's come down to this, right? I mean, after all we do in this conversation, starting back to you know what it's been over a year, right? Yeah, we've at least do, we're yeah. doing this, and the Yankees. I think I think that they're when I look at them. I still don't know, have a feel for the team identity, but I don't watch them like you. But I look at the Red Sox, like J.D. Martinez, like trips on the base and he's out. Like, you know, who does that? Like, like what's the deal with him? Is he going to be able to play? I I know LeMahieu's out. Yeah. I feel like. That's a big miss if you don't have him. Yeah. And I feel like there's a chance he doesn't play. I mean, I don't know. Especially the one game. Right. I mean, maybe by the end of the week, but just the fact that it happens, right. a guy like that, I just think is so silly. And and Bogarts has been really struggling, and Devers has just proven, like, I, I used to look at him, and I'd say, like, he's out of shape, he's chubby, he's lazy, he's laughing all the time, but now I really have to revisit. He's, he's still young. He's, Plus, it's not even that. He just has that demeanor. Like, he's serious about yeah. being a baseball player. Well, he really loves baseball. And listen, I, dude, I read him wrong. The, the home run he hit yesterday to center field... People that watch baseball realize how strong you have to be to do right. that That's and how hard he hit that ball. Like, Raphael Devers is a great hitter. Yeah. He is a great hitter, and he's proven that. And he, he has done what you needed him to do. He stepped up and took over when everyone else— When a lot of people didn't, right? Yeah. And so and I, I'm not a huge believer in the Red Sox. Maybe I'm a little too hard on them. But I will say, and like even like watching that game, I got into little details. Like, Pavetta, who I, I don't think that much of— That curveball he threw to was Soto insane. was insane. You, and Soto is probably the top three hitters in well, baseball. Well, of course, Eddie's the best in the game. Yeah. And and if you didn't see the curveball, I mean, it broke in the high inside corner. Insane. Insane. That, I mean, it was just in the, on top of the two inside fastballs that he had for call strikes. It froze so, him like a popsicle, too. Yeah, man. and he's a great hitter. So it was really fun for us to get into a game like that and to see them do well. Come back I love watching fight. last game of the season stuff. It's crazy. It, and, it, and, and it doesn't happen a lot. Like, it happens every, I'd say, five or six years, you know? But right. You know, the the final game in '78 obviously is way bigger because it's 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 pretty much the same thing as now because the stupid wild card. But that is obviously you know that was the one and done too. But you that was all for the marbles of the East, right? Right. So then basically back then you just have to win one series and to get in. to the World Series. Exactly. So I mean, it's just amazing. There were teams that won like 95 plus games who didn't make the playoffs back in those days, which is, is kind of crazy. All right, he's John Senecal. I'm Brian Shackman. You got some good nugget to today? Yeah, yeah we're, gonna, we're, we're talking uh, season records and uh, last game of the season mm-hmm. and face off. So we all know the Yankees and Red Sox played each other in 1978, and the Yankees, yep. Bucky Dent, wound up winning the World Series. And the, the, what, by the way, the, the, the side note of that is the Red Sox had a huge lead in that. Huge lead. In that. Division like, like fourteen like, games into, or something well like that. into August. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk first. We'll talk Yankee season matchups total. Right. Postseason they've started ninety nine. Yankees win two thousand three. Yankees win two thousand four. The big one. Red Sox yep. coming back and win two thousand eighteen. ALDS. Red Sox win three to one. Now what happens this year? Right. So overall the Yankees are twelve and eleven in the Red Sox in the postseason. Pretty much. So even. they just had the outside of the Bucky Dent. They've just had three times they've met. Four. So four there was you said 99, 99 LCS, 03, 04, and eighteen. So four, yeah, yep. that's right. And then this one coming up. Now in the regular season, the Red Sox and Yankees face off, right? 12, 12, 1,232 to one thousand thirty three, and they've tied fourteen times. Wow! So the Yankees and have history, the edge there. The regular season edge. Now the ties. I was like, all right, well, that's strange. Major League Baseball games end in ties. Like, was like the early nineteen hundreds or something. Forever ago, right? Yeah, had to have been. Now, there's some random times over history, right, that games have happened, but I couldn't find any Yankees Red Sox. So it must have been way, way back in the day. But what I did find is an interesting time that the Yan- that the Red Sox, it was 1949, and the Red Sox played the Detroit Tigers, and they tied them 14 to 14. And the Red Sox were down <clears throat> four run early. Detroit. Detroit, I mean, Detroit was down 4 1 early. They responded with nine runs in the fourth. Boston took the lead back in the fourth, sixth, seventh, only to watch Detroit come back, blah, blah, blah. 
Innings one through nine featured 33 hits, four home runs, 28 runs total. Wow. Yep. So the kicker here is the game ends in a tie because it was suspended because of darkness, right? 1949, no lights in the field. The kicker here is the Red Sox finished one game behind the Yankees in the AL pennant in 1949. No way. And that game ends in a tie. So would we have had our first Yankees Red Sox in 1949 if it wasn't for a suspended game and the Detroit Tigers coming back and playing a 13 inning game? That was suspended due to darkness. Wow, and that's it. That's obviously a, a Ted Williams, Dom DiMaggio, Johnny Pesky era. Nineteen forty nine. That they finished ninety six and fifty eight. One game behind the Yankees for the AL pennant. Wow. So they go ninety six and fifty eight, right? So that's thirty eight games or something over five hundred, and, and they don't, don't make, make it. the playoffs. No. Nope. That's some good. That's a good nugget. Yeah, that's of like seven nuggets. And I was and I was like pissed that I couldn't find the Yankees Red Sox ties. It must be from the late 1800s. It's gotta be or something. insane because I mean I, I tried every. You couldn't find it. I couldn't find it. Now I'm sure I probably could if I like I don't know like, like really insanely deep. crazy right. did quotes and all this good stuff. But I feel I feel like this is almost better. This no, is al- this is almost better than that. I love it. Real quick prediction. Again, I think I think the Yankees win on the back of Cole. I don't necessarily think there's going to be any sort of blowout game because I think Evaldi steps up. Evaldi's a good pitcher, former Yankee. Yeah, I feel like we still had the, him. I feel like one of the two pitchers is not going to make it. It's going to have it. It's going to give it up. Yeah, and Do you I think I feel like Cole's going to go Roger Clemens on you. I I mean I don't know who it's going to be. It could be Evaldi, but I will tell you that I think that like it's going to be like a six-two game. Somebody's going to go out to a f- early like four-five run lead. And I think it's not going to be close. I'm not saying the Yankees or the Red Sox, but one of the pitchers is going to throw up on himself. That's just my sense. I know one thing. I'll be watching, man. Listen, we'll check, well, let's check in later in the week Yeah, uh, for episode 51. So this has been episode 50, fan base, a deep dive into the greatest rivalry in sports. We hope you uh, like it, share it, and, of course, listen to it wherever you enjoy your podcast. We will talk to you very soon.